Hi, I'm Jan Doyle. We're continuing our conversation with Cindy Perdigeo. Did I get that right? That's perfect. Good. I wasn't 100% sure just then. Outstanding photographer from Massachusetts. Gorgeous flower pictures. And we're going to continue learning more about how she tells her story in photographs. Cindy, I understand you have a program called Intention and Inspiration. What's that all about? That's right. Um, well, I started to I started out doing very traditional photography, and within the last two years, I sort of um, found my voice in some creative flower photography. Uh, I've been creating some signature pieces for about two years now. Um, I often put my stuff over Facebook, and what happened was Nikon came to me and asked if I'd like to do a presentation at the annual Camera Club conference in Amherst. Now, do you know how huge that is? Ask me if I'm jealous. Because I am a photographer, and Nikon never came to me. Uh, the local Nikon reps are very, very supportive. Uh, a gentleman named Bob Watts is an extremely supportive man. He's a very good friend. Um, they've been incredibly supportive. They were wonderful about um, helping me out with the conference. Uh, it was a wonderful experience. The energy was amazing. That's phenomenal. And for Nikon to, to want to represent you, I mean, that says everything. It also says the power of Facebook. That is also also very, very interesting. Now, we're going to start looking at um, your first picture up here. And you were telling me that what you do is every picture tells a story. Can you explain that to me? Sure. I think that um, as photographers, we're, we're so much in a rush to go out and uh, set up our equipment and press the shutter and come back and look at our images. Um, and what I try to talk to photographers about at camera clubs is being really present with your photography, is slowing down and really feeling and seeing the photography, is to really be an active participant in your scene instead of just an observer. Now, how now that's that's so interesting you say that because I was famous for knowing for people telling me this is back in the days of film where the car would come it wouldn't even come to a complete stop I would be out shooting a roll of film as I get out of the door that, and that's not being present correct that's right and and, we, and we're uh, we have wonderful equipment these days we have wonderful locations and it's very easy to get caught up in taking a lot of images however if you feel an emotion through a scene or subject. You want to reframe that for the viewer. So you want to make your viewer feel what you felt when you were looking at the scene or subject. So by slowing down and being present, you get to be very intentional in your photography. You get to decide what's going in the frame and what kind of emotion you want your viewer to feel. That's very interesting. That is really, really interesting. Let's talk about a particular image now. Sure. So up on the um, screen, we have this. Could you explain this? Sure. Well, this is a good choice. It's one of my uh, favorite images to talk about. This is called bursting. And the reason that it's called bursting is it's one of the first fl three flowers that I had done. Um, and when I, when I looked at this flower through my lens, uh, the middle of this flower absolutely bursted into my lens. So I knew I was going to be very intentional in making the middle of this in focus, and the rest of the flower was going to fall soft. And, I, and, I did, and that's very much the antithesis of the tack sharp photography that um, oftentimes we experience. I let it go soft because the story was really in the middle. The story was that bursting. Mm -hmm. Now, I find, again, your background is extremely painterly. What is this background? Is this, is this Nick? Um, no, this is actually a texture that I added. Um, it is, uh, textures have become a way uh, for photographers to start to process their um, images now. It's something that's become very popular. Uh, so it's a little bit of an artistic texture behind a flower that's uh, obviously got a lot of energy. Um, so it's something that I added in Photoshop in processing. Oh, wow. Now, I also notice um, you, we have the image on the screen, but we also have it in a print. And what I really like is you have it in a card. And, and the reason I like that is if someone wants to bring this image home, they could order the print from you. But if it's out of their price range, they could always order a card. What is your price range for a print? Approximately. So these are actually um, stand-up boards, which are a little bit of a different vehicle than a print. Um, well, I find that's a good point. I find them a little bit more artistic than regular prints. Uh, my images have a lot of energy, so I want that energy to come through in the vehicle that they're printed on. Um, so these are these are available by a local company near me in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. uh, they are also available over the internet. There, um, if you Google stand-up boards or dry mounts. 
um, you can certainly find a vendor to do that. Um, if somebody were to order this from me, it would probably be, depending on the size, this is a 16 by 20, I would probably charge 154. Mm -hmm. um, what about your, now that's out of someone's price range. Correct. What about your, your card? Well, two things. First, this can be ordered much smaller. It can be ordered um, as, as, as a tiny, tiny, maybe an 8x10 or a 5x7 uh, small standout board. But the cards are available for most images on the website. Um, a single card would probably cost about $5. Um, I would ask for more if, there was, if it was um, a, 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 a lot more for shipping. Mm -hmm. um, so, and for I do so I would sell them in packs of twenty five or probably forty five dollars. Mm -hmm. That's good to know. Mm -hmm. But it, this happens to be one of my favorite images of your entire program. There's a, there's another one that's coming up in another show that I really really love. But I absolutely love this image. Well, this is a special image because um, it was again it was I, I was starting my creative process. I was kind of coming into my own in terms of finding my voice creatively. Um, and this did very well for me at uh, the camera club that I'm a, par a part of, the Merrimack Valley Camera Club in North Andover, Mass. Um, it, and it was important to me because I trusted my creative voice. And, and my photography often doesn't look like everybody else's. So uh, this 16 by 20 standout board hangs on my wall. And when I'm unsure or when I'm not feeling good about, about my message or what I'm doing, I look at this and it reminds me of when I trusted myself and how I was successful. Oh, what a, that's a beautiful concept. Beautiful. And I also wanted to say you just said something that you belong to a camera club. So across the United States, when people are watching this, if they are inspired by your work, there are camera clubs across the country and the world that they can go and join and grow up and be just like you. And so camera clubs are wonderful places to um, get experience. Yes. To not be concerned about judging so much, but to gain experience from other great photographers. The Merrimack Valley Camera Club is, has been very supportive of me, and, and there are some wonderful photographers there. But at the same time, you can find your own voice in a camera club. Yes. There are a lot of rules, and there are categories, and there is judging in camera clubs. However, if you show yourself as unique, and you show your images with good, strong elements, uh, you can do quite well. And, yes. And that really, yes. they've been so supportive of me, and I'm very grateful. I've been a member of a camera club for years, the New Haven Camera Club, and I'm just very grateful for the friendships that I've made there. It's not just photography. It's the co fellowship and the camaraderie and people helping one another. It's not just photography. I'd like to move on to your next image that we have coming up. This is gorgeous. Thank you. So a dahlia, um, and I could have shot this dahlia just uh, shooting the bloom. And I always say to good friends that dahlias shoot themselves. Uh, they're just <laughs> they're just beautiful flowers. And I could have shot just the bloom of this flower. Um, however, I included that little bud, uh, that little unbloomed bud that's sort of facing away, and that has become very much a signature for me. Is that unbloomed potential um, is really an energy that runs through my body of work. You'll see it in several pieces if you look at the website. Um, so that little bud is sort of facing away. It hasn't quite tapped into its energy yet, um, but it has the it has the larger bloom to sort of admire and uh, take inspiration from. Uh, this also has a texture behind it. It's a very warm texture that I added simply because it was a vintage feeling flower. Um, but again, it's the energy of that unbloomed potential that's being shown in this, and that was the inner significance for me. I have to tell you, I just jotted that down in my notes because as a former teacher and working with a lot of uh, a lot of programs in education, when I think of unbloomed potential, I think of the, the baby. You see this beautiful, perfect little baby and the potential that that baby has. And that image is just such a, a it's almost like mother and child. So when we all have our own stories, we're all very unique in our differences and uh, we, uh, all of our stories have potential. Um, yes. and, and if we can show that to our viewer as photographers, then that comes across. And you, you talk about different learning styles and education. Howard Gardner said there are many, multiple intelligences. Yes. Um, yes. So to reach people the way that they learn and to really tap into human feeling um, can be quite powerful in photography. Yes. How do, I have, how do you know about Howard Gardner? You're not in education. Um, I was in education for 10 years. I was a technology coordinator um, in three different school systems. Oh, wow. And um, was able to help develop curriculum and did staff development with teachers. Uh, so I have a little bit of experience in that. Um, and it, it also helps me when I go to speak to camera clubs. I, I have that um, ability to present. It's much less like being in a classroom and, and sort of delivering a message. 
Thank you so much. You, We're going to conclude this segment. More are coming, but um, if you want to contact, uh, if you want to contact Cindy, her her contact information will be on the on the uh, video. But what is it? Just tell me. So it's uh, some Kofi Photography. So it's S U M K O V I Photography. Uh, the website is with a www in front of it, uh, and it is some Kofi Photography. E at gmail.com and if you're interested in contacting me my website or looking at my website it's jandoyle.tv thank you so much for coming on the show thank you jan